Hello everyone, it's Ashley from Court Reserve. Welcome to the Pickleball Education Webinar Series. We are so delighted that you're here today. This is something that we uh, feel very passionate about, about helping um, not only our current clubs, our current organizations learn more about pickleball, but any new as well. So we're really honored today to have Dr. Lee Martin from the Pavilion of Pickleball in Tennessee join us. And he has done such a great job of putting together some information. It, it's from memberships to pricing for classes to how to do your floors to things they've learned, things they wouldn't do again, things they wish they would have known. So today's going to be so informative. Sure, Ashley. It's a pleasure to be with your folks on this uh, Court Reserve webinar. And I'd like to introduce to you my manager. That's Lisa Young. And I just Hi. want to make sure we, we put a face with the, the person that really makes it all happen here at uh, the Pavilion of Pickleball. Awesome. We all need a Lisa, right? <laughs> uh, a smiling, energetic, a good teacher, and a, a good people person. So uh, it, it is good to have a Lisa. Absolutely. That's exactly right. Awesome. And I see that you got us uh, looking upon the, the pop pickleball playground back there. That's amazing. So thank you so yeah. much. That's awesome. Busy day yeah. at the club. We're in our community space, uh, which is basically the size of one court. And then we have a very large door that opens out into four indoor courts and there's seven outdoor courts. It's a little cold today though. It's in the 30. So uh, uh, that's where we are in, in Tennessee. Okay. Well, I think you've got some things prepared to go over with us and I'm really excited because let me tell you folks, I've already seen it and it, it's going to blow your mind, the information that you're going to get from this webinar today. So I'll go ahead and let Lee get started and share. Very good. Well, Ashley, I just wanted to set some ground rules. I'm more than happy to answer questions, but Ashley is going to monitor the uh, chat room, the, the chat in and out, and she'll just interrupt me with your questions. I have about a 10 slide PowerPoint presentation. I'll probably take about 15 minutes there to talk with you, but I'm more than happy to stop on any slide and uh, give you more information. And Ashley's going to just be the monitor for that. Sounds so I'm going, good. To do a, I'm going to do a screen share here and hopefully uh, we will cooperate. Looks good. Okay, so you should see a first uh, a first slide that's starting a pickleball club with court reserve, and I've got a nice picture of, of a drone shot for our outdoor courts and the uh, the building there that's that's in the L of those courts is our indoor facility. You can see the uh, garage door opens and things like that. That's why we call it the pavilion of pickleball, the pop. Awesome. So let's see if we'll go. All right. Uh, this is my outline for today, very briefly. It's to talk about how you start a pickleball club using court reserve. I want to give you at least an overview of our pop facility, uh, four indoor, seven outdoor, and some of the extras that we did here to make it a touch above anything else that you can find in our area, in the public parks, whatever. Uh, and I think that's necessary because you are creating a club that people are going to pay membership fees for. You better do it better than what's available for free to the general public. We'll talk about court reserve and their keys to success. Uh, I'll go in detail about how important it's been for us to start from the very beginning being cashless, uh, our ability to do event scheduling and get that information out to people's phones instantly, uh, communications, some of the accounting reports that we do, et cetera. Then we're gonna talk about uh, creating community. Uh, all of what we're about, we have a cut line, friends, uh, let's see, friends, fitness, and fun. I'm not sure it's in that order. Fun friends, <laughs> it is. that's why I couldn't remember it. Uh, but that's all about creating community. We've met so many new people here uh, and it's, it's just, how do you get that community going and how does it sustain itself and then grow beyond? And then finally, I'll give you some thoughts on pricing. Uh, I don't claim to be the expert on that, but I'll tell you what's worked, what hasn't worked and how we, uh, how we look at that, how we divide our membership fees and our court fees, our event fees, et cetera. And again, I'm more than happy to answer any questions, but you're getting only one data point a year and a half into a, a startup. Okay. So the facility, the Pavilion of Pickleball facility, our total facility, you see a, a direct overhead drone shot in the middle there, seven outdoor courts, four indoor courts, you see a daylight shot on the left, and then uh, finally a, a line drawing of the outdoor and indoor architectural rendering of uh, what the courts and the facility was going to look like. If you look at the bottom part of that indoor side of things, you see, I'll blow that up in just a minute, but you see our community space. And uh, this is more than just a bunch of courts. It's a place for people to come together, have events, have tournaments. And uh, I, I think we money well spent on putting those, those indoor uh, 
uh, facilities together and a community space so people can meet and gather. <clears throat> Our indoor is four courts with a common area. On the lower left, you'll see just a, a corner shot of people playing on those indoor courts. And what you'll notice is that we paid really good attention to the lighting. It's an indirect lighting LED, high efficiency uh, lighting system. We can see the balls really good. You also <laughs> see on the, the edge there, one of the garage doors is open slightly and you can still see how much brighter God's sun is than the uh, indoor lighting. So uh, the the, Garage doors are a good thing. We have had to put up some screens to make sure that their light doesn't cause a glare inside when people are playing. The lower right corner, you see a, uh, uh, an event that we had. We actually had the number four and number two women players play our two best men in an exhibition about the third month in. Nice. And uh, we have these large sliding glass doors that we can open up. I think we had about 50 or 60 people come and enjoy that. It was a great way to get some publicity and enjoy uh, uh, some learning from those folks. Uh, also on the upper screen there, you can just see this common area is about the size of one more court. Uh, we have a check-in single entry point with a desk, desk there. We use that area also for a very small store. We sell paddles, balls, foot cushions, um, focus paddles, odds and ends, those types of things. A very small office where we keep some of our equipment. And then as you pass further in, you see our, uh, the gallery that I'm actually sitting in right now, and that entire wall opens up out into the courts. A very small serving kitchen, uh, men's and women's bathrooms, and then there's four showers uh, back in the back of the facility. We actually operate the POP as a 24-hour facility. I'll sh share some of the yeah. good and bad about that in just a minute. Okay. The good and the learnings, as I would like to say. Uh, <laughs> life's a journey, and it's all about learning. Uh, some of the things that we did that we invested extra money in that I think have paid massive dividends. First of all, there's a court surface called Sportmaster, and our courts are actually cushioned. They've got five layers of, of uh, rubber and two layers of color. Now, when I say five layers of rubber, they're only about a sixteenth of an inch thick, so altogether it's about a quarter of an inch. But and, and you don't really feel it running on it. You can feel it if you impress your thumbprint on it. Uh, you, can, you can feel it gives a little bit. When you feel it is about three hours after you play, when your, <laughs> your knees and your ankles aren't hurting. Uh, I'm an old guy, I built this for me. <laughs> but, uh, and, and it is a, a more of an investment because it, it's more material and it takes about two weeks to put that down. You put it down, let it dry a couple of days, put it down, let it dry a couple of days. So unlike a painted court where, hey, we're in and out in two days, that's not gonna happen here. It's you're in and out in two weeks. And sometimes a little longer if, if you do it outside and you've got rain and things. We used a company called LSI out of Chicago for our indirect lighting. And you can even see it behind me right now. Yeah. Uh, there's no glare spots there. It is a very well lit place. And I, the facility is, is so nice. I mean, we didn't waste money. We did things purposefully, but it's so nice. I can't tell you how many people we've had come in here and join the first time they saw it. They walk in and they go, this is a great pickleball facility. This is where we want to be. So um, we've gone from standstill to over 750 members in 18 months. Um, wow. A lot of that's because of Lisa's attitude. She gives them this big smile and they just won't go away. And we've, got another, <laughs> we've got another lady named Barbara Payne who's got to be, she could sell ice cream to Eskimos. I'm telling you. <laughs> but that's so, a long story. So what you're saying is you have to have a smile in order to be a successful pickleball club. Absolutely. Look, <laughs> actually, there's a ton of things people can do with their time and their money. Okay. Yeah. We want them to have more fun here than anything else they could be doing with their free time. Yeah. And that means, uh, I, I think I got another slide where I said, we want to make it like cheers. You know, everybody knows. That's your right. Yeah. And so I in the COVID it. thing, we had people start signing in. That wasn't so much for the COVID as it was so that we could look upside down and see their names and start greeting people by name. There okay? you go. Awesome. Uh, we use a, a product called Open Path. Uh, we have one door entry to this whole thing. And Open Path is an app that lets you check in any time during the day or night. So we really are a 24-hour facility. But Open Path also tells us who's in the facility when we're not. So with a few security cameras and Open Path, uh, in a year and a half, we have had no vandalism, no stealing, no problem. And that was a big piece of guesswork for me. Uh, does it get used? Yeah, we have some people that stay late. The club closes at nine, but we've had some people stay till 1130. They just can't get enough. 
Uh, we've had people that start playing at 5.30 in the morning when the, the, the facility used to open at nine o'clock in the morning. Uh, but we started, we've gotten so crowded, which Court Reserve tells us what our utilization factors are. In the last two months, we start opening now at six in the morning. And it took us about one month to fill up six in the morning to nine in the morning with drop-ins and early birds and stuff like that. I couldn't believe it. Wow. But, but of course it gave us 25% more capacity too. So there you go. Awesome. Uh, another positive is this community room with this massive sliding door. Uh, we had to invest in the sliding door, but it's just kind of special to be able to make you feel like you're part of the court. Uh, we chose to do individual locking showers. So the showers are maybe six by eight. Um, and half of it's shower and half of it's a sitting spot to change. So it's men or women, it's lockable, very private, but we don't have what you would say is a traditional locker room to keep up and maintain. Uh, and th those changing shower rooms are, are unisex. We don't put a, a name on the door, but they are lockable. We've got these eight garage doors, making it very much a pavilion in the summertime. The positive side of that is great airflow. The negative side of that is they really are bright. You can lose the ball in that. So um, uh, I, I'm glad we did it though, glad we did it. <clears throat> And uh, it lets us run the facility with no air conditioning. We do heat it to 45, 50 degrees in the winter, but there's no air conditioning in the summer. Uh, and that works fine in Tennessee, except for August. And then if you want to lose weight, this is the best sauna in town, okay? <laughs> Especially in August. <laughs> yeah. One learning was on the sprinkler system. And I have to peg this one on my architect because he wasn't familiar with the square footage where you start mandating sprinkler systems. But if we just cut a hundred square feet off of this building, we would have saved $60,000 in sprinkler systems. And the wow. problem is it's all asphalt and concrete. There ain't nothing in here that's going to burn. <laughs> <laughs> wow. A hundred square feet cost you 60 grand. Yeah, sure did. Sure did. Yeah. Thank you very note, much. Note that people, note that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, then I, I think if I had it to do over again, but I had, I had honestly had no, um, uh, what you would call it surveys or demographics or whether to have any idea how many people would sign up for this place. Okay. But I should have gone six indoor courts rather than four. And mm -hmm. it would have uh, alleviated some of the crowding that we're having in the winter. And it also would have um, cash flowed a little bit better. The, the basic utilities and the manning the desk and stuff. So okay. live and learn. If I was doing it again, I think I, I would not go as small as four courts. I'd go to six courts because the incremental cost of adding those two courts after putting the building in place would not have been quite so much. Okay. okay? I have so, a question while you go to the next slide. Somebody sure. asked, how many hours during the day is your facility, like how many manned hours? Someone's there behind the front desk in the check-in area. Great question. We started from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. And a month and a half ago, we went from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. Okay, so someone's there at your front desk those hours. That is correct. Okay, great. Thank you. All right. And uh, those are those are pretty much minimum wage type things. We give them a break on their membership fees. They carry a paddle, so sometimes they fill in on a court when somebody is not there, and they get uh, reduced court fees when they make a reservation. So it's got all sorts of perks. Yeah, nice, <laughs> nice. So court reserve has really been a, a key to our success. Uh, again, us not knowing what we were doing, it was so important having a fundamental system to work around. Uh, first thing I would recommend if you're going to a, to starting from scratch, go cashless, do everything on the card. Uh, it's just amazing how many headaches that eliminates and people don't have to bring cash. They don't worry about it. They know it's on their card and it's taken care of. I, I just can't say enough on that side of things. On event scheduling, it makes things really transparent and particularly for our drop-ins. We can, we can have four courts drop in 20 people and we can have a wait list and they automatically get notified when somebody drops off, et cetera. So uh, the event scheduling for courts, for block times, for uh, drop-ins, for mixers, it's all there in court reserve and people get really familiar with it. I mean, I've got a clientele, a lot of which are over 65 and by golly, they've taken to the dadgum app. It, it, it works. <laughs> I was, I was concerned the first month, but it's fine now. <laughs> awesome. The uh, communications, the emails are a hit. I, I think I'm, I'm running in on about 6,000 emails a month now. Okay. We'll do once or twice a week to all our members and then about twice a month to everybody that's been in the building. Okay. Mm. And uh, now the court reserve has added texting. 
So uh, we're just getting familiar with that and how that's going to help us because everybody uses their phone these days. Yeah, you're right. On the billing and accounting reports, honestly, I run a batch billing five minutes a week. And really, it takes me about 10 seconds to set it up, hit the button, and boom, there it goes. Uh, it tells me who's paying. It tells me who's got an expired card. Uh, and we are doing literally thousands. And when I say thousands, somewhere around four to 5,000 transactions a month. Uh, wow. Out of this thing. Because, I mean, every, every court reservation is four transactions. Every block time is four transactions. Every membership is one transaction. Every drop-in is 20 transactions. It gets to a thousands of transactions. Think about doing that by hand. Absolutely yeah. no way. Um, and it also uh, it spreads out and pulls out our tax summaries and our court utilization. And the, the reason that that's important is we do a lot of experimenting, uh, you know, with a 2-5 level, a 3-0 level, a, uh, a 6 o'clock in the morning, 10 o'clock at night. And you can begin to see, oh, that one's filling up. Oh, that one's not. And you just change it to something else. That's all awesome. right. So it, without court reserve, we couldn't get the feedback and experiment nearly as well as we do. Um, even the seniors have learned to, to use the phone app. I'm not knocking them at all, but uh, it was a concern at the beginning because people like pencil and paper and they like the telephone and uh, they don't have to have that. And it really is a full featured, uh, to be quite honest with you, it's a very complicated piece of software on the admin side. Uh, and it, it, you know, I made my share of mistakes the first couple of months, scratching my head. But now when I want something to get done, uh, they've got a real nice messaging system, and usually within about 10 to 15 minutes, they'll send me a video on, it's already in there, Lee. This is how you do it. <laughs> <laughs> so you're talking about our live chat support team. That's correct. Okay, that's, awesome. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. And I've had that's some great. pretty intricate things I needed done, and most of them were already there, uh, and, but they also keep a, a wish list and, and update things, you know, quarterly or so. So uh, my hat's off to court reserve. We couldn't do what we do without them. Thank you. Well, before you go, we got some questions, if we'll take those real quick. So um, on the cashless system, is that something that's communicated to players like that you are a cashless system or do you have a cash box if needed? Oh, um, we did somewhere around $260,000 of transactions last year and we did about $300 in cash. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. Right. And that was somebody coming in from out of town. They left their credit card somewhere else. I mean... Uh, we just do cash. And all of the players know it because when they become members, it goes on there. We set up an account with their credit card. Right. And so from the very beginning, it's cashless. Right. That's right. I hope that okay. answers your question. Yeah, there's one more. Um, do you think that right now the texting is going to be critical? She says, is it worth the extra add-on, especially if you have a small startup club? Really good question. I think if you're in a small startup club, walk before you run. Mm -hmm. It's it's okay to, to just use the email and the communication stuff there because I mean, that's where we were up until a month ago. Right. And, and we're just now getting into the texting stuff. And, and it's really, things have worked just fine without it. I think it's just going to be that much better with it. Those are good questions. All right, moving on. Okay, fine. How do you create community? Let's face it, pickleball's all about community. Anybody with any kind of respect wouldn't play a game called pickleball, right? <laughs> So um, we really are about having fun with people and having ways for people to meet new people. Uh, we've had a ton, a, a Tennessee seems to have an influx of folks coming from New Jersey, New York, and California right now. And it seems like as soon as they're looking for a place to play pickleball, they're at our door. So that's been a lot of our growth too. Uh, but those are people that come into town, a husband and wife maybe, but don't know anybody. And we've got to find ways for them to play. So we have a standing Friday, Friday night mixer from six to nine o'clock. Uh, five bucks you come in and play for three hours and people just pick up and drop their paddles on courts and play so uh, they can find they can find other couples to play with other individuals to play with uh, one I left out there that I think is really important we have a Saturday morning boot camp it's uh, called from tennis to pickleball in three easy hours and uh, we, start, <laughs> we start from the grip and we end up with how you score this crazy game and in, in two hours they're out on the court and they're playing, and by the time they leave, they'll forget the next time how to score, okay? But they know everything about first shot, second shot, third shot, the two-bounce rule, volleying the kitchen. They know it right, and they can go back to their neighborhoods and say, 
we haven't been playing right. <laughs> wow. So is this for people who graduated from tennis and now want to learn pickleball or really just you just call it tennis to pickleball? Well, I called it tennis to pickleball to begin with because we are co-located with a tennis club and I thought we would attract a bunch of the tennis players. That has not been the case. I'll, I'll talk about that if people want to know. I mean, about 10% of our members were tennis players from this co-located tennis club that has about 800 members, okay? Okay. I thought it'd be about half, but there's, there's this kind of snobbery about tennis. So I really should just call it boot camp. We do it for members and we also do it for non-members. But the neat thing is I get racquetballers, paddle ballers, ping pongers, volleyballers, soccer players, swimmers. It's, it's amazing. People are coming from all over the place to pick up this crazy game. Awesome. And it's been a really good on-ramp. If I, if I, we'll do it from anywhere from two to 10 people every week. And if, if I, for instance, have eight people that aren't members come in and take that class, I'll have four of them join on the spot. Wow. Without fail. So it's so, driving membership at your club to have this, this beginner boot camp each week. It is. What it is, is the cost for that, Lee? We make it cheap, 10 bucks for members, 20 bucks for non-members, okay? Wow. My, part of my goal is to teach all of Knoxville how to play pickleball. <laughs> nice, that's awesome. And, and if all I do is teach them and they don't ever come back, it's okay because they go to their neighborhood and say, hey, you want to learn how? And they send somebody else here and they join. So, yeah. you know, you can't look at things on, well, how many bucks am I going to make mm -hmm. today? Yeah. We're building something here. Uh, we do level-based drop-in. Drop-in is kind of a misnomer. It's a round-robin event. You sign up for it ahead of time, uh, and, uh, and they get full. The, uh, we have ladders for uh, the competitive folks. I've created something called the Penny Ladder because I didn't – Yeah, you could have quiet, please. I'm on a national call. Okay, thank you. So we have people that uh, – we do a Penny Ladder, and uh, rather than keeping scores and all that kind of stuff, you start the day with four pennies. When you win, you get a penny. When you lose, you lose a penny. When you check out, you turn in your pennies. And I love then, it. We got a board where you add it all up. So, you know, you can miss a week. It's no big deal. But uh, if you miss three or four weeks, somebody's creeping ahead of you. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, we do early birds. And there's a big difference between 3-0 players and 4-0 players. The 3-0 mm -hmm. players want to have nothing to do with the latter. They come to play for fun. The 4-0 players love the pennies. I mean, they'll fight for a dadgum penny. So, uh, <laughs> So that's just the way it goes. We also do block times by the quarter, 13 weeks. We charge them for 12 weeks. It's kind of like you're, you're a golf foursome. We do encourage like five people to sign up because there's usually one person that's out, yeah. uh, but you can still play five easy, you know, just rotate them in and out. And uh, one thing I would say Court Reserve gives us is this freedom to experiment. It allows us to um, try things, see who signs up for them, see what happens the second and third time and see what sticks it gives us the chance without this chance to experiment uh it would take a lot longer to adjust what we're doing yeah all right we've had some more questions come in okay. um are you happy with the layout and the flow of your spaces and courts other than going more indoor courts you know would you have done anything differently so without you know you've already said i wish i'd have done six instead of four but is there anything else you would have done differently as far as spacing and layout Okay. The things I really like, I'm not talking technical details. I'm talking spacing and layout. Okay. I told you the technical details. Yep. Number one, a single point of entry. Okay. Mm -hmm. You can't quite sneak in the building. We do have an exit that's in the very back that goes to the, to the outdoor courts, single point of entry with a check-in desk right there. Uh, and we have a, about a six foot walkway behind the courts on both sides. It's big enough to set chairs there. So, uh, you know, the next people that are waiting to play can be sitting there. People that are wanting to watch stuff can be sitting there, that kind of thing. Okay. Okay. So I, I like that. They are separated by low nets so that the balls aren't falling back there. And you're not chasing them around. Yes. We do have uh, nets that separate each one of the courts, but we can extend those or not extend those depending on what's going on. Uh, I would definitely su suggest that. That's that's a, a good thing. They're, they're hung from a wire. It's about seven mm -hmm. feet high it's just mm -hmm. a mesh net um and i'm really pleased with the community space because we've had birthday parties graduation parties we've even had leadership training here <laughs> <laughs> awesome so uh, yeah you ever try to use pickleball for leadership training what the heck why, why uh, not that's awesome so, so as far as the flow goes no, i'm pretty i'm pretty pleased with it okay i would be honest if i'd say oh gee i missed something here 
Um, but this all came from our imagination. There really weren't facilities to, to build this around, but you can get to any court in this facility without bothering to play of somebody else because of those those back walk areas. Yeah, for sure. Um, okay, so somebody wanted to know if you let people repeat the boot camp. Oh yeah, we do. Okay. We let people repeat the boot camp, but we've also got next level clinics too. Okay. Okay. So some folks need it just to get the scoring in their mind. Okay, but uh, but other folks, it, uh, it it works out that they would just like to take it. Uh, because they want to learn a few more of the of the mechanisms of what's going sure, on. Sure, sure. So when you have the three hour boot camp, you're using what two courts for ten people usually, or one court? Yeah, one court for five people, two courts for ten people. Okay. And another question that's come in says, "Did you integrate in some way court reserve and ladder tournaments or leagues? How do you use? How do you do that in court reserve? Your ladders tur tournament leagues? The the penny ladder is basically just a drop in. Okay. Okay. Right. It's, it's a drop in with a sign up limit. And when they come check in, they get their pennies. When they leave, we take their pennies back and, uh, and that kind of thing. Uh, somebody told me that I, I did a felony because I painted the pennies gold defacing oh, yeah. property. <laughs> I, had to pay, I had to paint them gold because I didn't want guys sneaking pennies in that weren't our pennies, okay? That's right. We won't <laughs> tell anybody. Nobody's allowed to talk after this call. <laughs> so, so court reserve worked really well for that. Uh, we did a... A, a, a dinkathon for Valentine's Day. And the way we use court reserve in kind of an, an unusual manner was to say just one of the two members in the mixed doubles couple had to sign up. So we use that for a tournament sign up. Uh, but we, you know, for, for major tournaments and things like that, you go to Pickleball Central and, and, and do those types of things. We haven't attempted to use court reserve in that way. I'm not sure of its features for that purpose. All right, very good. All right, moving on. Okay. Team is the key. I introduced you to our manager, Lisa Young, and she is just, uh, she's great with people, has a lot of energy. She loves teaching and she manages our desk staff. So we have a, a number of college students, high schoolers, and a couple of retired people that manage our staff, our desk. Uh, and really what, what managing our desk is, is running court reserve all day. Okay, they come in and they check in people. Uh, they answer questions, et cetera. But most of the desk is operated through court reserve. We have a, a handful of what I call ambassadors and instructors. These are not full-time people. In fact, they're employed elsewhere, but they are so key. The pickleball community knew these people. They come in and they teach a few clinics and a few classes, and they brought people when we first started. So uh, Tito Ladro is number 55 in the world men's. And uh, Ty Petty was a, a top 10 ping pong player as a junior, and uh, you can't get around him. <laughs> Chris Cargus is now a top 10 women's mixed doubles senior, uh, and, and these folks have just gotten the word out. They set the tone, and we're going to have some players come out of the Pavilion of Pickleball because it's such a great facility, and it's year-round, and they're getting a lot of time on court to, to hone their game. Nice. Our desk coverage is basically check-in. Sometimes they fill in playing and do minimum maintenance. So, uh, a little bit of a Windex here on all of the glass and, and, and that kind of thing. And our ultimate yeah. maintenance here in this facility is really limited. We don't have, it's, it's, it's important to keep it clean. I'm not saying don't keep the place clean, but we've got concrete floors in our common space, um, glass surfaces, a little bit of a, a blowing to, 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 to just blow dust and stuff around and that kind of thing. But, but the, the maintenance cost of this thing have been very, very minimal. Uh, but you got to keep it clean, especially with all the COVID concerns. So, sure, sure. So we have another question. Um, it says, you know, you've been trying different experiments, even if your events don't work and maybe they don't fill up enough. Do you have the time to reschedule it for regular use or how do you monitor that? Yeah, I'm just trying to find the events that are going to be ongoing. So when I say I'm experimenting, it's not like, oh, well, I had, a, I had enough space for 16 players. I only had seven. Uh, let's revamp the courts real fast. No, mm -hmm. it just says, hey, that's not going to be a four court usage in the future, or, or maybe we missed something there. Um, the, the other thing is, is we're on two hour court usage during what we call minimum hours and a hour and a half court usage during uh, peak hours. And although that's changing next quarter, everything's going to go to an hour and a half so that we get synchronized because okay. we have a lot of 30 minute and, and hour gaps the way we've got it set up right now. And that's just more court 
opportunities for people that uh, we have to manage a little bit differently. So we'll go to like six to 7.30, 7.30 to nine, nine to 11.30, uh, nine to 10.30 uh, through the day. We're gonna synchronize it a little bit different. I'll probably be sending a text or two to your chat folks to say, how do I fix that? <laughs> to make oh, sure well, right. we have sandwich time. So now we have a way to not let people do that gap in time. So we can talk to you more about that. Absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Great. Okay. Moving on. Some thoughts on pricing. And I will precurse this with saying it's probably low, but I didn't have too much to go by. I had one guy named Richard at the House of Pickleball over in North Carolina that, first of all, turned me on to court reserve, and I greatly appreciate that. And I called him maybe a dozen times in that first year going, what do I do? And, and uh, Richard always answered the phone and always gave me help. And that's one reason I'm always willing to do the same thing. You know, this is a community of trying to help people stay healthy and enjoy life. And uh, you just can't get enough of that. So I, I, I'm looking at a membership and court fee model, not one or the other. Um, if you can ask me questions about that, but I'm just telling you my philosophy, one keeps the lights on and the other pays back the capital. So that's, that's where we are. We have memberships uh, in the 30 to $50 range, individual family, and we have a distant discount of $5 per month off of those. Uh, we did not draw nearly as many from the co-located tennis club as I anticipated. We gave them a super good deal to get started because we wanted to fill some things up. And, uh, but the pickleballers came through. By golly, it, it lit on fire in the Knoxville area for pickleballers. <clears throat> the um, court and events costs <clears throat> basically it's $5 a person for a 90-minute court fee indoors. Free drop-in outdoors. Uh, as they start to get busy, we'll probably do a $2 per person reservation fee as the summer rolls on. Our block times, we, we price 13 weeks at a 12 week price. And sometimes, you know, there's a Christmas holiday or a Thanksgiving holiday, or we have a special event. So we give and take there a little bit. And then finally, we do do tournament fundraisers and we just basically charge $1,200 a day for the indoor courts for a tournament fundraiser. That's about a 50% premium on the typical court fees. And uh, if that was typical court fees for the day at 100% utilization. Wow. And it's great, great exposure for us, and it, it brings members every time we have a have a community event here. Uh, good community support. That's awesome. We had a couple more questions come in. Uh, do players generally adhere to their set reservation time, or do you find the need to kind of marshal folks to free up their courts for the next reservation if they play longer than their allotted time? Yeah, um, we got clocks in there, and. Uh, the next folks just go in and stand behind the court and lo and behold, two minutes later, they're off. Okay. So, uh, the number of times we have to go out and say, Hey, uh, you know, come on, come on. is very minimal. We're just cooperative. Right. It's a whole spirit of cooperative nature here. When we make a billing problem, which we've, we've had our, our share just because of the complexity of what we're doing. When you got those thousands of transactions, customers always right. Okay. okay. I'd rather spend 50 bucks fixing a customer than create, a negative um, uh, whatever out there. Yeah, for sure. The next question is how many coaches do you have and what times do you do your lessons? And really her questions are around, you know, do you do more private lessons, more clinics, and do you li limit the number of teaching courts when you are doing those lessons? Wow, that's a hard question to answer, okay? We've got private lessons, We've got pro plus three lessons. We've got clinics. We've got boot camps. <clears throat> and they are, I have actually uh, five people to teach here from time to time, but they are not uh, full time at all. Okay. So, I mean, if you were to look at our court utilization, I'd say about 15 to 20% of the court utilization on the indoor courts are for lessons or clinics. Okay. I'd say about. 30 to 35% are for block times that are scheduled throughout this time. Another 25% are for these drop-in ladders and the rest, the rest of it is fill in the blanks. Got it. Got it. Do you do your lessons certain times of the day or the, or days of the week, or is it just kind of fill in when there's availability? Well, we, uh, people will schedule those over time and it, it fills in, you know, my priority is block times first. Okay. because that's paid for it's ahead of you know it's three months out etc so 
if I had 90% block times, I'd probably be a pretty happy guy. Okay. <laughs> uh, the second priority is these, uh, the well attended drop-ins. Okay. Cause that's the way people meet each other to make block times. That's right. They're, all, they're always full after people realize we're going to have one every noon. We're going to have one every one thirty for the three O's or the three fives. Okay. Then we begin to fill in with lessons, clinics, and then individual uh, court reservations for one time at a shot. How many days in advance do you allow players or members to book out court reservations? Ours is eight days except for the block times. Okay. And that was a number set in court reserve. We never changed it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That works. I figured they knew what they were doing. Okay. I did. <laughs> I love that answer. That's great. Okay. All right. All right. Moving on. That's great. So just a little bit of summary. Uh, I know this is a court reserve seminar webinar, but honestly, I couldn't have done this without court reserve. I'd have so many accounting fees and mistakes. It would be ungodly. <laughs> I certainly couldn't have done the experimenting and stuff that we've done. So many thanks to uh, Tim Owens and to Ashley Owens. They're really trying to do the very best they can to listen, to fix things, to help and make a great product. Now, I don't have other products to compare it to. So I'm not going to say, oh, it's so much better than such and such or, or such and such is a lot more expensive, but better or whatever. I honestly don't know. It was recommended to me. It works. I've been doing it for a year and a half and, uh, and when I needed something, they helped. So you can find them. They've got some pretty interesting ways to get a hold of them, and uh, they're helpful. Thank We've you. had the likes of Scott Moore, the number one senior, Riley Newman, the number three men's player, Lauren Stratman, the number four women's player, and others who have played and taught at Pop in seminars and things like that. So uh, we're, we're making a little bit of a name for ourselves, which is kind of fun. I mean, let's face it, all right? We went to wait list last week with over 750 members. The funny thing about going to wait list, we announced it two weeks ahead of time just to let our members know, hey, we know courts are tight right now. We're listening to you. We want to serve you well, but we also have people looking for a while. We're not going to just say too bad. Mm -hmm. In 10 days, we had 82 members join. <laughs> it oh was unbelievable. Goodness. You make something scarce, people jump at it. That's right. So wow. that was kind of neat. Uh, it is patient capital. I know because I'm the capital. <laughs> <laughs> but we didn't try to, we didn't really have a business plan to go out to the banks with. And um, so I just tried to be careful in what I did. Uh, this is my quote unquote retirement. I taught entrepreneurship at the University of Tennessee for a decade. And the, this is a very purposeful endeavor to stay healthy, to make new community. It's not that I want to throw money away, but in essence, wanted to make sure that uh, we had a great facility. And it's, it's, it's turned out to be a great season for me. A lot of fun. And uh, last, just a little bragging rights, USAPA 3565 Indoor Championship last year in, uh, in Alabama. Uh, so uh, so that never would have happened if I hadn't opened this place. And it was kind of one of those things that, you know, five years ago, I never would have dreamed about doing something like that. And wow. that probably just means I played down a level. <laughs> But I was three, five before COVID and none of that changed for a year and a half. And I played every day, sometimes five hours a day. So uh, it was fun. Nice, uh, nice, nice. So uh, we got some more questions, actually. Far away. Um, let's see. Can you give us a range of what you charge for private lessons at your facility? That's a great question. Um, the, it's, it's from $50 an hour to $75 an hour, depending on who's doing it. Okay. I've got a top 10 female senior who is $75 an hour. Uh, and I've got uh, uh, Lisa who runs the place and is licensed. Uh, she's at $50 an hour. And then the other two are kind of in between. Okay. Uh, how do you manage your reimbursement for instructors when they conduct private lessons? That's great. Uh, I, I, all of these are really good. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. That, first of all, we, we charge people when they come in through the point of sale portion of, of court reserve. Okay. okay. So depending on who's getting it, there's a charge there. We ask that the uh, instructors put together a timesheet at the end of the month. They are, uh, they're not full-time employees. I think it's 1099 is the appropriate term. Okay. And so uh, we do an 80, 20 with them. Okay. All right. So we don't charge them court fees, but in other words, if they're charging 50 bucks, an hour, we're going to take home um, $16 of that for the court fee. 
which isn't okay. quite what our court fee would be, but this is also a service to our members to have have really good teachers here. So you give so, 80 to your private, you give 80 to the instructor and the facility keeps 20. Yes, it's kind of okay. like uh, you eat what you catch. So uh, we don't we don't publicize for them. They find and bring people uh, and, and they don't pay a court fee. The 80-20 covers that. So at the end of the month, they give us the number of hours, the number of things that they taught. We send it out to our accountant and they get a, they get a, a direct deposit. Nice, nice. Um, let's see, clinics. Um, is it a package number of amount of plays or drop-ins or do they just sign up and pay for each time they wanna come? The, the clinics are run by some of our instructors. And then also we have like Riley Newman did a clinic, Scott Moore did a clinic. Um, we do like 80, 20 with them too. They just say, Hey, this okay. is what, this is what I want to make. This is what we're going to charge, et cetera. And, um, uh, we don't charge them court fees either. So, so they can okay. kind of have the whole facility. So, uh, when we do clinics, it's very much like an event mm -hmm. and you sign up on court reserve and, uh, first come first serve and you get charged with your credit card, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So, so a clinic looks very, very, very much like say, uh, a mixer or an event. Okay. Yeah. So according to your model, what is your max cap on members? Great question. I had a tennis guy who uh, had taught me tennis for about 15 years. And he said, Lee, you can do 125 members per court. Hmm. And so that was his number. And by golly, when we got to, uh, you know, 600 members on our four indoor courts, our court utilization was about 90%. So he wasn't too far wrong. <laughs> wow. the, the, the thing he's wrong about is that pickleballers will play much more than tennis players <laughs> will in a given week. Yeah. And, and you laugh, but they really do. I got yeah. some folks that are out here every dad gum day. Right. You know, so um, uh, we've got 11 courts, which would probably say that I can have a membership of about a thousand. Uh, in the summer. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. We, 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 we turned off the spigot here for a few months. We'll figure out how we open it back up. And I'm even looking at a, one of these canvas and rib structures where I might enclose a few more of those outdoor courts. Cause if it keeps growing like this, I might as well make a, a place for more people. Yeah. Because when you started, you had the indoor courts, right? Yes. And now you just built their outdoor courts. So you have you gone through a summer yet with your new outdoor court chip? Uh, not really. Uh, we went right. through a, a late summer fall. Okay. Okay. But uh, we haven't really been through a full summer with them. So then it'll be interesting next fall and winter when you gain, you know, what happens to all your members when it gets cold in Tennessee, right? And how yeah. you determine. And that's the beauty of what you can do is figure out what that looks like now. Well, yeah, and going to a synchronized, um, see, we, we went from nine to nine to six to nine, which gave us 25% more court right. capacity, okay? The next thing that's going to get us about another 10% is to go to synchronous operation, which is rather than two hour block times and hour and a half block times, the whole day is going to be on hour and a half yep. uh, times. And so we'll get rid of all of those little gaps in the day that, that make for a bit of a mess. Yep, that's good. Uh, let's see. People are asking if they have additional questions after today, could they call you and talk to you? You see my phone number there on the slide? Yes. That's your uh, phone number to get to is, you directly? That is my cell number. That'll get okay. to me directly. And uh, I'd be honored to help anybody I can help. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, you know, we're running up now, on the hour. Hang on what? just a second, though. Yeah. I'm talking about the phone number at the bottom left corner, not the phone number at the top. Got it. So 865, yep, 604 6660 is your cell number. That's correct. The one at the top is the desk at the Pavilion of Pickleball. And uh, I don't call that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, any uh, while people are maybe thinking about that last question about pickleball or, you know, things that they may have thought about today, you know, what do you think in the next couple of years in terms of, you know, there's 
all these tours happening. There's different tours. There's different ratings now for pickleball. Give us your thoughts on the tours that are happening, how that's going to help the sport, as well as some of these ratings that are going around. And if you guys adhered or do you do any of those ratings um, where you guys are today? We do ratings. Uh, we put a rating in there in court reserve for folks, but uh, a lot of it also is self-rating, okay? okay. And, and so with these drop-ins, people get the feeling pretty quickly whether they're in the right fit or not. <laughs> as far as what's going on in pickleball, uh, I, I'm probably not the best to answer that, but there's a lot of money being pumped into it. I just heard of a $61 million facility in Dallas that opened up a lifestyle fitness that's pickleball, tennis, kid stuff, restaurant the whole deal you got chicken and pickle growing and and you know th those folks are investing in real money i my investment here was to try to create an, an environment that was better than the public situation uh the big question was would people pay for court time would they pay for membership and we probably got 30 percent of our members that said they'd never do that <laughs> right that's right uh it's going to start being on like espn uh the guy that did did top golf is, is heavily invested putting yeah. these teams together yep. uh, on a local level, which is really where I want to focus a little bit more. I'd love to try to get it in the middle schools and the high schools with some inter interscholastic uh, things. I've got the courts to do it now. Just got to figure out how to make that happen. And uh, also I'd like to have a local version of what might be called club wars, where Ooh. we, where we figure out some kind of format that means people get enough playing time to, to drive somewhere to do it. Uh, but there's a, a, a little bit of, of, of uh, proprietary nature and, and hey, I, I, I'm, I'm for my club. That's awesome. I love it. That's I haven't a seen a good model for that yet, but I'm looking for it and trying to figure it out. You we call us. We'll, we'll help you develop it at Court Reserve. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> All right. We got a couple more questions. Um, any suggestions? for specific activities to have for a grand opening of a pickleball club. Oh, wow. It's, it, it's neat to do an exhibition. Okay. You know, our, our first month in, we had this number four, number two women play our two best guys. And, and it was just kind of neat to do that, okay? Uh, we've done the thing where you bring the Kona ice truck out, uh, <laughs> those types of things, free play for people. Uh, just be creative, okay? And, and don't, I wouldn't spend a ton of money on a, a grand opening, okay? Mm. But uh, all of our stuff has been organic. Mm. We did put a website together. You can see pavilionofickleball.com, our, mm. our stuff. Uh, but as far as advertising goes, I think we spent about 400 bucks on Facebook to the Knoxville Pickleball P Facebook uh, group. And, you know, and that's in a year and a half. And I think we wow. spent another $500 with some uh, moms for moms for Knoxville to, to publicize our summer kid camps. Okay. And, and that's all the advertising we've done. Everything else has been word of mouth. Put your money in making it a great facility. That's good. That's really good advice. Um, wow, we've had like four questions come in. Um, let's see. Great informational webinar and facility. Lots of people are going to be in touch. We also have somebody who's starting up a paddle facility, and she said that she's found this very transferable. So thank you for the information. Um, any advice on your how you feel soft hours, like the 10 a.m. to 4 p.m.? Huh, yeah, I do have advice there. Know your clientele, because see, we we went from, from nine to six doing these two hour block times to kind of just fill it up. Okay. And then we noticed, Hey, we got a whole bunch of retired people. Okay. We got some people with, with, with space and time. And so we started doing these drop-ins at 12 o'clock and at one In fact, we did one from 12 o'clock to two o'clock and it got so full that we split it in two. We did one 12 to one and one one to three. And every day now, every day now, we will have between 16 and 20 people sign up for that. Wow. Yeah. That's and awesome. so that, that was what I thought was going to be absolute dead time. It's turned, out, it's turned out to not be dead time because there's so much desire amongst uh, this elderly, healthy community to play with each other. Yeah. But it's and, knowing and who your clientele is. And we don't limit it. The great thing about pickleball, in my humble opinion, is it's not a guy game or a girl game or a 60 year old game or a 30 year old game. We got, it's a level game. It's a yeah. level game. So we're doing these things at, 
at a 3 a level at 12 30 at 12 o'clock a 3 5 level at 12 at 1 30 maybe a a 4 0 level at, at 7 30 at night whatever because some of the working guys that are younger so and and the the thing that blew me away was we'd started doing this early bird thing on tuesday thursday at six o'clock in the morning i got between 16 and 22 people out here at level four wow they're just beating up on each other on that <laughs> that's right at 6 a.m no doubt okay in fact, in fact let me show you real quick what this penny ladder ends up looking like as i it takes me about five minutes to fix it up every day can, okay. you, see, can you see that so so those are the labels and and how much they have earned for the yeah if you look, if you look, uh, let's see, Ty Petty up there. Yeah, yeah. He's come three times. He's incredible. He takes five extra pennies home, six extra pennies home, six extra pennies home, which basically means he didn't lose no matter who you put with him. <laughs> nice. Okay. And then, then you come down. The only reason I'm kind of near the top there is because I'm there every time. <laughs> right, right, right. That's awesome. I get my one penny, two penny, two penny adds up after a while. I love and then, it. And then you come on down, you go, oh, I don't want to be on the bottom of that thing. <laughs> so, yeah, you better show up and with your pennies, that's for sure. So, so if you can see it, you know, we've got Wednesday, we've got Tuesday, we've got Thursday. Nice. We got Saturday. Saturday just. Wow. Okay. And, and so it's a way that members can meet each other yep. and can, uh, can really enjoy what's going on. All right. Well, I'm so thankful that we were able to hang out with you today. And let's just see if we have any other questions. Um, what's your average? Can you break down the average cost of to build the indoor courts, like in your mind? Do you know what that is? That That's a, a very reasonable question. I'll be as open as I know how to be. The um, <clears throat> But you also got to realize this is Tennessee. It might be a little bit cheaper here. We used a we used a guy who'd never built one of these facilities before, which might have cost me more. Okay, so I've got four courts, seventy-two foot span across. Okay, um, each court requires about thirty feet, so I've got about one hundred and twenty feet this direction, and um, <clears throat> it's a Butler building. It's a steel prefab type of building, but we still had to have an architect do it. So on the indoor facilities here, and to realize too, we've got this common area, which was about 2000 square feet, which is fully plumbed, fully air conditioned, et cetera. So that's more expensive than the courts. Right. So put all of that together. It was 1.1 million. When we were planning, we thought it was gonna be about 650 to 700 K. Okay. Now that does not include the land because I'm, I'm on land with the tennis guy and he's a partner. Okay. It does, does not include the parking lot because we're using their parking lot. Okay. okay. That is this facility, everything in it. Okay. The outdoor courts with this cushion and the great lighting out there too, uh, we're running about 35K a court. Okay. Courts. Yeah, that's good information. 35 to, 35 to 40K, including sure. the lights. <laughs> That's really good information. And I've, I've got a couple of people that have said they're all in on Club Wars. We're all coming to Tennessee. We're all coming to play in the Penny Leagues. That'd be awesome. We're all going to show up. So, hey, we're running out of time. I just want to thank you, Lee, for you know, like complete transparency today, just showing the heart of what pickleball is all about, you know, being there for everyone. Um, I think that this is um one of the best webinars we've ever done, because really you're trying to build something that's specific to help healthy people have a great place to come, play a sport they love, get to know one another, be social. And uh, so thank you again for, for just being here today. And Ashley, I spoke with uh, Scott Moore earlier today and told him about this. If you would send me a link, he'd love to watch this. You bet. You bet. Well, thanks, everybody. I hope you have a great weekend. And this will be up on our Court Reserve YouTube channel over the weekend. And we will see you next month at our next Pickleball Education Series. Bye, guys.